Good evening, everybody. System Chalk here with the 18th episode of our House of Light run. First time on YouTube playing as the archaeologist. It's actually been a while since I've read the description for the archaeologist. So the Sandscar Journal. I am the librarian of Hush House, and this journal will record what came, sorry, what arose from my crime and my curse. The archaeologist's dearest wish when they came to the house was to record a history where their crime could be forgiven or redefined, but you can complete the game by recording any history. You might wish to begin your studies with the School of Cosophy Wisdom. The archaeologist, I opened a tomb and found too late that it was a prison. The plague that I released is now my shadow, or perhaps I am its reflection. It is too late to set matters right, but it is never too late to protect the future from the past. In Hush House, I can do no harm. Perhaps I can even make amends. So, um, first of all, the mystery that I ran into yesterday of the occult scrap, I used it in something. I don't remember what that something was, but I uh, clearly did not have it at the start of the run. This is one drawback about uh, recording the videos is I didn't really have much of a break between sessions. I more or less just crashed straight into House of Light. And I think it is clear that I'm probably more scattered brain than usual. Um, and part of that's a function of work, part of that's a function of no breaks. And uh, I think eventually the plan is I'll maybe just try and record two or three weeks of episodes ahead of time so I can give myself a rest. But I know that's not probably, if that's going to happen, that probably won't be till December or maybe the new year. So, and obviously getting a break by overworking yourself isn't always the smartest idea, but... I will worry about the administration on my own time. I want to improve the nectar for the Orchard Keeper, so let's read a book. I prefer this to giving up grapes because we're, it's going to take a couple of seasons before we can get grapes again. Ambrosial. So with that in mind, I do still want to try and make the most of the sweet bones. We'll just use the other shaft to keep working and restoring. I learned something or perhaps just remembered it. So again, we're at the point here where we're just waiting for that last nectar. So in this case, we will continue to speak to the assistant until... Uh, until we get what we want, and I think we are getting our health back reasonably soon. All right, I deserved a little quiet time. So this, I think, is enough time for us to restore the core as well. I figure at the very minimum, if I can't do some gardening with it, I can at least talk to Tuppence. So a quick nap in a warm bed with something comforting to drink while the winds chase the clouds and the clouds chase the sun. So my preference for uh, doing gardening with my health and my core rather than, say, you know, cataloging a book or talking to the chickens would be that when winter comes, I'm only going to be able to use those. Uh, I'm only going to be able to talk. I'm not going to have anything that I can. Uh, sorry, there are no vegetables that I will garden. Obviously, I can get the blue crown. It may be a good idea for me to get uh, some of the pears as well. I know we're short on that, and I believe those are good for uh, nectar and grail. So maybe what I'll do is I will... I think what I'll do is I'll have one that I use for the pears, and I'll have one that I'll use for the vegetables. The gardens of Hush House hold plants with many virtues for those with the wisdom to recognize them. Carrots, tomatoes, marrows, and blessed onions, all the unsung heroes of the stew pot. Actually, you know what? I think I'm gonna, I'll put this here and then I'll maybe just draw another pitcher of water. Not today, obviously, but all right. Opportunity, an element of the soul. Increase relevant aspects by adding an element of the soul card. So we're good there. And we'll carry the satisfaction overnight. Again, when we can, we'll use Mrs. Kill to open up the, the grail rooms. But seeing as we have a character that will have two nectar that isn't available to me at other times, the focus is definitely going to be on using the Orchard Keeper as much as possible. 
The Rose of Hypatia, a volume of collected teachings of the Sisterhood of the Knot, that arcane contemplative order that existed in all histories, but in some was very powerful indeed. This was recorded by Hypatia and dedicated to St. Nympha. St. Nympha is described as not born, but cultivated. The sentience that became the saint, Hypatia indicates, uh, inhabited a sinister... Let's try that again. St. Nympha is described as not born, but cultivated. The sentience that became the saint, Hypatia indicates, inhabited a sinner's corpse in order to enable that sinner's redemption. Not all the dead answer the man enter the mansus by the winter door. Not all the dead enter the mansus at all. Oop, I don't know where I want to shelve this yet. So we have two weaving and not working lessons. And solace. So it might be nice to hang on to the solace, but I don't know. Well, the day's still relatively early, so we can at least take weaving and not working up to level two. And I'm slightly inclined. The one thing that is nice is that we do have the uh, moving, weaving, and not working up to would give me access to uh, Pribyat. We'll see. Hmm. See, the real drawback here is that I'm potentially going to have to give up the core for something else. Well, no, you know what? Okay, so uh, I do, I really do want to get the pairs at some point. I think I will use... Uh, no, actually, sorry. Okay, I'm, I'm all over the map. Uh, so I will still use the core. I'll use the Trist to level up weaving and not working. We'll only worry about the one level now. And then... It's mostly just because I don't want to waste the solace. And then maybe the next day we'll figure out what we want to do with weaving and not working. There is a small argument here for leveling up Edict's Liminal, particularly because Edict's Liminal has enabled some of the moth stuff for me. Right, Storm. I've learned something or perhaps just remembered it. So we're still waiting on the impulse. better now. This one, I will start by getting the Trist back, just because I do want to have that as an option for the weaving and not working. Now, if I work out the times, I did say I didn't want the shop to be just about making money, but I suppose I have already restored some elements of the soul, so maybe I will just make the money with the shop to make sure that I'm still uh, somewhat... Well, I mean, I don't have to end the day with more money than I started each time. We'll, f we'll figure it out at the time, but I definitely want to bring uh, the tryst back. It is autumn when the leaves rustle. The silent landlady has served me apple pie with steamed cream in the window nook. And Ambrosial, Ambrose Westcott's inventive, one might say pioneering or indeed buccaneering essays into kitchen craft. Westcott proudly announces his intention to transform cuisine to become an engine of alchemy, a fount of war. Westcott compares the ferocity of fire with the intensity of appetite as, in essence, one essence. A fire's ability to transform and destroy grows when it is offered the correct fuel. So too, he implies, can a sufficiently inspired appetite allow its possessor to consume greatly, strangely, unwisely. So there's our impulse. And you know, I think I've actually decided on what I want to do with the... So if I add the fog... I don't think Ryman... Oh, yeah, okay. Easier said than done. I think we'll need to use the reading room for this. So if I do the fog... Uh, inks of Contain... Well, no, Inks of Containment will still cover this too, but I want to see all of the moon... All right. We'll wait till I have the trist back. Intuition. You just know, you know?
Exalt with a memory. I can discuss a memory with my assistant. So at this point, the remaining memories aren't relevant. We just wait to... I'm trying to think if I have another desk with moon, but... Well, I do, but not one that'll take the forge. But yeah, so what I should have maybe done with the fog was it's a nice opportunity for me to be able to make an Inks of Containment regardless of the element of the soul. Memories don't last long outside books, but it's made a difference for the day. All right. So like I said, we don't really have anything we need in terms of memories. We'll use the Orchard Keeper to open up the Wrecked Pantry right away. Now, we'll still try and do this for the other rooms, but the other thing that I want to try and do before the, before the end of the day now, or, well, okay, it doesn't have to be before the end of the day, but something that would be good to get done relatively early would be to invite Corso back so that he can teach me Hyksos. Hyksos opens up Skolikosophy for me. Potentially opens up a couple of books as well, but I think there are fewer Hyksos books than the others. But again, the possibilities, um, if nothing else, just simply having another element of the soul will allow me to do more. And then uh, it also puts me in a mind to generating more inks. So again, the more I'm thinking about it, the more I am of the feeling that I probably should be using my elements of the soul for crafting and such. The wrecked pantry, smashed glass and shattered timber. This room can be restored and there'll be salvageable provisions tucked away in the wreckage, but I will need someone with strong arms and a patient heart. All right, another sack of vegetables. I deserved a little quiet time. So now is not a bad time for me to reflect on exactly what I'm doing. So the tryst is going to be something that I use to level up weaving and not working. I'm actually going to bring back a second tryst. Ah, okay. So I want to bring back a second tryst so that I can make the ink. Um... So I'm definitely getting the pears. Fragrant pears soft in the hands. Now my, I guess my outside option with the shaft would be to, well, no, I could feed the chicken. That would maybe be a good idea. So yeah, let's think about the rest of the day. So I've got 25 seconds before this uh, finishes. I'm okay. Uh, regenerating another tryst so that I can so in 25 seconds I'll make the cat wink and then in the one minute I'll use the uh, the tryst to level up weaving and not working because that'll only take 30 seconds that'll also mean that the solace doesn't get wasted although the storm will so yes we will we'll catch up on the things I should have done my chores pleading tuppence cluck cluck Satisfy this creature's appetite. Food will make a hungry beast or a wild one cooperative. Okay. Took me a little while to figure it all out, but we're good. We have a lot of eggs to work with, too. One thing that might be nice to do, I think it's a little too late to try the beehive, but it would be interesting to try and get some replacement honey up here. All right, so this timing works out well. If I had tried to use the... If I tried to... If I leveled up weaving and not working with this tryst and then use the other one to make the cat wink, I'd lose it overnight. So this one I'll use to make the cat wink. In fact, I'll do that right now. And this is mostly just because it feels bad to... Um, it feels bad to let the fog go to waste twice. The reading room desk. The book wheel is a DeWolf heirloom, a gift to Ava DeWolf from her admirer, the adept Franklin Bancroft. The desk and the lectern are much more recent. Steel plaques to both read to Governess Van Loren in gratitude for his assistance in the closing of the winding stair. Eabney Hastings, Nocturnal Secretary, 1928. 
I'm trying to remember if this is this is the back stairs. <laughs> uh, all right, let's go. I had a couple ideas of what the winding stair might be a reference to, but I sometimes just need... Oh, this is a good one. So we don't yet have the bittersweet certainty, but I know with Oranoscopy, I can uh, I can get that. So that's good because it gives a lantern and winter, which as far as a combination is concerned is unique, and it's not one that... Um, It's not one that the characters you talk to will produce. So this is the usual way I make the count wink. A lot of these are just hopeful on my part, as opposed to them actually being... Yeah. It's a lot of Midnight Marks, um, and then this will be Old Wound. I really do need to make an Old Wound at some point. But yeah, so Inks of Containment is the real way that I'm going to get the Cat Wink. The nice thing about this one with the Tryst is that I don't need to add the Lunar Globe. So basically my options are, if it's a foggy day, I can do Tristan Fog, or I can do any element of the soul and uh, the lunar globe. If it's not a foggy day, then it's Trist, um, an impulse or uh, uh, impulse or um, confounding parable, makes of containment and the lunar globe. So we effectively we can make Cat Wink whenever we want. It doesn't completely get me out of. It's not like a get out of jail free card for everything because uh, characters like Fraser will require a higher. Oh, they'll require a higher level of scale to be invited. Although, of course, I have the option of just inviting Corso now instead. Opening up this area, we already know the rooms that we have access to, so there's nothing new that uh, comes through this. But overall, it's, it's pretty good. This is going to be about making food, and then this will be about serving food. So we're going to have two different rooms um, that uh, serve our salon needs. The pantry. This room is close to the roots of the house, and so it had a troubled reputation with the servantry, who late at night might hear the pulse of an unseen drum, the buzzing of flies, voices crying out in tongues unknown, and so the servants would trade favors not to be the one to fetch spices for his lordship's posset after dark. Lots of stuff in here. So we've got rose pearls, surprisingly common in these waters. Now this isn't edible. Uh, phosphorescent scrapings, rendered inert but still luminous. Dandelion wine again, homemade flower wine, a canned ham. The taste will remain uh, reliably unchanged for many years to come, which is, in some respects, an advantage. Pickled pilchards, an acquired and unforgettable taste. Uh, veiled goddess Lapsang Suchong, named for an enigmatic minor deity whose charge is the healing of burns. Blackberry jam, plucked from hedgerows. We have a pumpkin, mash it, eat it, hide forbidden documents in it. Soft amber pumpkin, a lovely golden gourd grown soft beside, sorry, gorn, a lovely golden gourd grown beside the soft sea. Scrumpy, the West Country's most unregenerate achievement, perhaps at its best when pressed from stolen apples. Two packages, beeswax, it begins as a flower. Schloss Jannings, dry aromatic white wine. Domain Reveline, the Revelines abandoned their lands and yet someone is still making this wine. Don Lion Coffee, one packet, coffee from beyond the great deserts. Elderflower cordial, wrung from the sweet, uh, wrung from sweet white flowers. Rosehip jam, plucked from wild hedgerows. More blackberry jams. Uh, I believe we already did that. Yeah. Flour, pulverized grains, bread's precursors. TRN limited drinking cocoa. TRN spices and savers department markets this as the secret sacrament of the last Inca. Eigengrau, if a grade on oil were drinkable. Cuckoo Honey, the Blumberende were rogues and trickster heroes among the carapace kinds. Ingenious, brave, prolific, untrustworthy. In Numa, their children might yet bring their gifts to ordinary hives. Evening Isles Coffee, coffee from beyond the sunset sea. Gideon Soaks, a therapeutic collection of beneficial bottles. More Donline Coffee, uh, the Cater and Hero Second Flush Assam. Tea from the Land of the Real Unicorn, imported by Cater and Hero. Pickled Mushrooms, you'll learn to like them. Slow Gin, a homemade berry gin. 
More pickled pilkards. Cinnabar, the bright scarlet powder with silvery brilliance locked within. A pale marrow. In Brankrug, they take their marrow seriously. This is a marrow redolent of sorrow, and the golden marrow is accounted a beauty among its kind. Essential periost, what remains when you boil and scrape us down to our utter fundamentals. Mackerel, eat it while it's fresh or keep it while it's salted. A box of oddities and a basket of vegetables. So all of this is going to be something that we turn into uh, turn into salon fuel at some point. A full belly makes a helpful friend. This beastie is now inclined to cooperate. Now, because we don't have too much more to do today, I think now would be a good time to do a little bit of cleaning. The few, first few times that I played this game, I wanted to try and keep the house untouched, but some of the fun is actually just organizing everything. Oh no! Until you run into those uh, those cases. So let's just try something a little different here. I want to make sure that I use the infirmary bed. So this is for the satisfaction. Now that night has fallen, I can rest and perhaps dream on the day's doings. I can actually start putting some of the vegetables on various shelves. Or I thought I could. Maybe we move the these vegetables to the side. There we go. Mostly just trying to think of what I can what I can move out and where. Catwink, dark and pungent. Now there's nothing stopping me from writing a letter to Corso right now, so I think I will do that. Well, actually that may not be true, so it depends on what uh, what's required, so... He needs a lantern. We should cover that, although we may need a different desk. Uh, yeah, actually. I don't have three lantern on its own, so I would need the assistance of a memory. Bit of a shame, but we'll, we'll sort it out. It is absolutely... Oh, hang on! <laughs> no, I want to do this as soon as possible. Um, how am I going to pull this off? Actually, this is not as not even remotely as hard as I thought. So we'll add the revelation. So it's a particularly good time now because this revelation was about to vanish. So even if I don't invite Corso tomorrow, we can at least get the letter written to him. There we go. Request Corso's presence. I have enough here to craft a letter inviting Corso to Brankrug. So we'll wait for the sweet bones to finish. There we go. Better now. So I do want to get this done reasonably soon. We gotta use the solace or the storm, doesn't really matter, but consider there is always more to learn, improve the skill to level two. This will increase its aspects, which will help with crafting and make it suitable for higher branches in the Tree of Wisdoms, if you haven't already committed it. And fragrant pears soft in the hand. So in theory, I can actually put this in the pantry now, but the question is always, do I have... I actually need to make the shelf space. So the first thing I think I'm going to do is I'm going to move the wine to the wine cellar. All of these different boxes should probably go elsewhere. Um, but as far as food is concerned, so let's make it so that the pantry at least just has food. Um, 
Lapalie's Nook is becoming a little too much of a dumping ground, which it always winds up being in my playthroughs, but this one I at least have good intentions. And I'll move the beeswax to the dispensary. I do need to make some more candles. They're particularly helpful with um, Reverend Timothy, and in the end, one way you can sort of think about candles in this game, particularly when you're using them with Reverend Timothy, is if you sometimes say to yourself, I wish I could... So, yeah, actually, here's... I'm realizing now, actually, some of the, the ways people say this. So, you know how when people say, I wish I could use skills with... Um, I wish I could use skills with characters, or I wish I could use elements of the soul more than once. And I totally get it, right? But this is basically a variation on I wish the game was easier, which is completely fine, right? This is this is the way this is the way we really feel about almost all games. Um but at least when we're having trouble with them. Some are obviously very, very easy, and then we usually say something of the opposite. But um what I what I think is an interesting reframing of that idea is that clearly when you have something like a level nine skill, the, the equivalent statement is saying, I wish I had a, a 10 memory that I can give my, my character. And that's never going to happen because that essentially trivializes all of the different rooms. But if you have ever found yourself wanting to use an element of the soul twice, the game does actually give you the materials to do that. It's just you need variety. You can't be a one-note librarian. So for instance, Reverend Timothy takes uh, takes candles. And in this case here, well, if you said, I wish I could give uh, Reverend Timothy another shop, well, there you go, Aglophotus scented candle. And that's not just limited to the Aglophotus. I believe the moth, um, the moth orchid candle will do the same. That's not moth orchid. I don't know if this is really worth hunting down, but... Yeah, lots of honey scar candles. I always thought there was a moth orchid candle, but I always keep mistaking them. But anyways, the, I think the principle holds, right? You you definitely have uh, you have a way of creating things that will enhance your uh, your assistance, and this is true for memories, right? There are very powerful memories that you can make, even metals, right? If you want to boost. Uh, Denzil, you could use Gervanite. The only catch here is that Gervanite doesn't improve his edge or his forge. So realistically, what you would probably would be doing would be using the um, the steel, let's say, or maybe the um, the copper. But yeah, for the most part, you do actually have, and certainly with the cooking that was added as part of House of Light, you have even more options in terms of leveling up those, uh, those capabilities, uh, just simply because you have... Um, Sorry, I'm really I'm I'm easily distracted by the the organization. But yeah, you you definitely have a lot of um you have a lot of options when it comes to enhancing the characters. And the only thing is is that it requires you to just take that one further step. So instead of saying, okay, I'm going to use Shapt twice, instead it's like, well, I can't use Shapt twice, but I I do know that I have this beeswax and I know that I can make um, I know I can make a candle, and if I make this candle as opposed to that candle, I'm going to get the, um, yeah, I'll put it on the top shelf. I know I'm going to get the, uh, the points that I need. Um, and for me, that, that's the way that I sort of make sense of the, of the, uh, ability system in the game. All right. I think I can afford to unpause while doing this. I need... A little, uh, a little focus, but now I just need to post it. So I'm not, I don't think I'm going to invite him right away. I think I want to finish the work that I can do with the Orchard Keeper. Uh, let's put this grumpy up here. I'm not crazy about using more than one shelf for the booze, but... I suppose it'll have to do... I could, of course, also add it to the wine cellar, but we'll keep the wine cellar for wines. 
I think I'm going to move the packages of various uh, various items. We're going to move those to the kitchen. Whereas the the actual food, things like the mackerel, the pilkards, and all that, that'll go in the pantry. Hey, we fit them all. Nice. The skill is now level 2. Its power aspects have also increased. So I don't think this one's going to go up to level 3. You never know, but I'm happy enough uh, saving this one to level up Edict's Liminal. Um... Right, daybreak. Memories fade, assistance departs, but the soul is refreshed. Just before the day gets started, I'm going to get the last little bit of housekeeping done. No! Eventually, I'll want to brew all of this. I think probably in future, I'm going to try and use any surplus elements of the soul to... Um, to... Uh, I think I'm going to be able to fit all of these on a shelf because we also have these two here. Okay, well, I'm going to move the honey to the kitchen. I'm going to organize my marrows as per perfectly normal people always do. We're getting somewhere. As well, uh, I'll try not to make this like the entirety of the end of the episode, but I am kind of conscious that we're at the 30 second mark. All right, I don't have, oh, there we go. More flour. We'll bring two. What I'll do is I'll at least see what the weather brings. And uh, I'm a little conscious of the fact that I'm about to start a weekend or a week of work and a busy week of work. So I know any decisions that I don't lock into the playthrough at the end of this session uh, are potentially ones that just won't happen. So I wanted to uh, wanted to get some preservation in place. No. I really thought I could push it a little bit further. You can see the shadow. There we go. So I also still have the beef and all of that to add in as well. I'm not uh, I'm not under any illusions that this is an easy an easy batch to sort out. And of course, the kitchen's a little bit of a catastrophe right now, so I'll, if I want to organize everything, I still have a lot of work. But I think even just getting some basics down in terms of, you know, roughly th this is where, you know, the following subset of things will live. Let's maybe just put the ham on this one. I do love how round the pig is in the picture. Hey, we made it. All right. This may actually be one of the most organized pantries I've ever been able to pull off. Um, what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to move the pilkards or the pickled stuff up. That's just because I'm a little conscious that we're going to be fighting for space reasonably soon. Um... I am, like I said, I am going to be fighting for space soon, so I don't know if I want to move the eggs quite yet. Let's um, move the beef.
There is no way I'm going to fit a second pheasant there. Doesn't mean I won't try, but... <laughs> um, yeah, I can't fit two of most of these things, so... Okay, uh, so it's probably going to be the plums that are orphaned. Whoops. All right. We got close. Um, I'm sure there's probably a little bit of efficiency. You know, the real. I think the real um, improvement here would be if I moved the drinks. So what would my... What would my alternative ham shelf be? Uh, not worth thinking about right now at the end of an episode. This is enough for me to start with. Okay. So, um, the plan, in fact, one of the things that I can do differently because I'm more likely to use the vegetables than I am. We'll put the plums on the bridge briefly. I thought it would let you just put things on the bridge to store them. Because I'm assuming I can't just swap these things out. Oh, wow. All right. Well, there's a cheat code for, for future storage. Uh, I also want to find a, a place for the Pyrus uh, or a Cal sorry, or a Calcinus. But again, we'll handle all that in the future. So for those of you that don't like five minutes of pantry organizing, my apologies. But we do have some fun coming up. Uh, okay, so I don't see any situation in which I don't get the assistance from an orchard keeper. So in autumn, the orchard keepers come to sell their wares at Brand Krug. A shilling will buy one's help. And on that note, I also imagine I'm probably going to want to restore my health the same way that I did last time. So pour it out. Hey, this is great news. All right, so we're going to be able to open one of those tougher... Um, one of those tougher rooms. So I'm going to start with the health. I am ready to lend my limbs, boosts heart, scale, and nectar. And I'm actually going to take a minute to write this down. So of course the satisfaction is going to be left for a future, a future encounter. But we'll just take a look at what we can do with the Orchard Keeper. So we have uh, two Nectar right now. It'll be three, then it'll be five, then it'll be six with the Tool. Uh, it'll be eight with the, uh, the Dandelion Wine. And then we can make that nine feeding her the grapes or uh, alternatively the bowl of sea blessed pears. Clearly the pears are the better option because they're renewable for me. In fact, we're going to pick one of those right now. So we can get up to nine with that. Uh, we might even be able to go even further, but in this case, we won't open the Rose Haunted Hall. Um, we will go straight for, was it this? No, not this room. It was definitely a nine. Ah, the root throng descent. Okay. Now the real question is, uh, do I want to try the collapsed cellar? Excuse me. Um, I don't think I can do that until I have... Well, okay, sorry. There's any number of... Uh, there's any a number of sneaky things that I can try to do to boost that, but realistically, I'd probably want to wait for the Hive's Lament. Um, and the reason for that is I do have things like the Pyrus uh, or Calcinus. Um, the Cuckoo Honey would probably help push me along. But the thing is, is that, like, what do I really gain by... Um, Sorry, by opening up the collapsed cellar, right? I get a few more food items. I get access to Earl Brian's tree a little bit earlier, but in the end, this isn't really locking me into a whole lot that's interesting. So in this case here, I think, again, we'll make hay. Um, I 
think this is actually the last season where I can use the um, the uh, the Orchard Keeper. So that's a little bit of a shame because we were going to try and open up the Rose Haunted Hall. But of course, with Seven Grail, we do have a few options for Mrs. Kill in this case. Again, it doesn't hurt to double check and make sure that I'm making the most of my existing resources. But yeah, so I think in the uh, when winter comes, we'll use um, Denzil to open up the Gloomy Stair. We will use Mrs. Kill to open up the Dim Hall, the uh, Rose Haunted Hall, possibly the Heart Haunted Room. And then we'll also have access to the Fisherman. So the Fisherman will give me two moon. Uh, or one sky. The moon is the more likely of the, the two. Now that a lot of that is going to depend on weather, but in theory, so we have two moon, we can bring that up to three with the tryst, we can bring that up to four with uh, the tool. At which, and then the question is, well, what do we do in terms of, uh, of the, different, um, the different food items and such? And so, uh, what was it? So again, I guess our best, our best bet in that case would be Two from a fisherman, one from the tryst, uh, one from the tool, so that's four. If we got fog, then that would take us up to seven. Then we can add the pilkards, which would bring us up to nine. And then I suppose that, that in that situation, we would use the eigengrau uh, to take it to ten. Although we may have other... Um... Oh, apparently we don't have other moon drinks right now. Well, we do. We have the... The Isle water. I think probably we could get a little more moon from the mist kissed water as well. So I guess we have 11 in terms of moon. So we could open up the shrouded space. We could open up the rustling stair. Uh, heart haunted room, although we did say that Mrs. Kill could also help us with that. The veiled chamber. The abandoned bedroom. Actually, the abandoned bedroom is going to be an easy one for me because all we need to do is hire the fisherman, use uh, a memory, so say a confounding parable or an intuition, give them the um, tool, and we don't even need to worry about using up the element of the soul. So lots and lots of rooms. And actually, I'm pleasantly surprised as how many of these rooms are being opened by seasonal hires. So in this case, we're not you know, we're making the most of the season as it emerges, as opposed to just letting or hoping we get lucky. I'm trying to think if I want to do anything with the sweet bones. I think I am going to try and earn a little bit of money because we are starting to get short. And this is a really tough one for me to decide whether or not I want to bring Corso back for today, because the language lesson is going to take a while. I think the answer to that is yes, because it's not going to take me that long to get the Orchard Keeper to where I need them. So, send an invitation to a visitor, stamp, envelope, send. All right. So, uh, I'm going write, to uh, write some notes for myself just to make sure that I don't lose too much. But I think the main focus of today, other than opening that remaining room... Uh, I probably want to figure out what I'm doing with weaving and not working. I'm thinking the most likely case for that would be to level up Edict's Liminal, but I will open, I am open to other possibilities. Uh, I want to try and get some of the books read. I could actually just use my metal right now, but I'll actually let's um, we'll put them all in one spot. But yeah, so uh, we will slowly digest the books that we have. And um, I think probably given where we're at, I don't really need more eggs from Terence and Tuppence. So the, the health and the core are going to be spent getting the last of the vegetables that I'll need for the season. I'll probably switch to marrows for the next little while just so that I can get something that I can use with um, Corso and... Um, and more, or rather the Moors. Um, and I don't really think crafting-wise, I don't know, if we get something interesting from the Orchard Keeper, I can see myself making some more Catwink, but I think probably 
Uh, if we have a salon in winter, it's going to be quite late in winter because I actually need to prepare everything and then, um, and then get the invitations written. And I think probably making the most of today in the sense of opening up all the different rooms is a more sensible use of my time. Something we will do, uh, we'll sort out in next week though. Thank you everybody for watching, particularly for those of you who uh, endured the organization. But we are going to be doing a lot more cooking and sort of by extension a lot more House of Light content in the coming weeks, weeks I think. So look forward to seeing you then. Until then, have a wonderful weekend and take care.